Hi, Gospel Guitarist here again with another video, um, Audio Tech. In this video I have a small system set up that I use for live sound and I just wanted to show you this unit because I can cover several different items quickly to get through the uh, final units that need to be discussed. Um, first off, um, when you're out there, when the, what you're going to want to have is a, an actual power conditioner. Um, I like the Furman units myself. Um, they have the lights on them. There's other brands out there that you can also buy. But you want something to uh, help keep down your um, interference and keep your power supply honest. There's also really expensive units that can cost, you know, 1500 bucks or so, and they actually will um, condition the actual voltages that are supplied to your system. These are more like really sophisticated, you know, floor units. Uh, but I never go out without them. Um, basically what I have in this rack is a front of house rack. Uh, this is what I use when I don't need a lot of signal processing and things like that. Um, for most of the events that I do for evangelism and things, I don't need to get too carried away. Um, and this is one of my basic setups. Um, so outside of having a power supply to plug all of your units into, um, I always like to have a BBE sonic maximizer of some type um, this is the lower probably the cheapest one that they make but um, it's just a single channel um, this can make your good sounding system great um, it just has simple controls one to handle your high frequency processing and one for your low frequency processing they're almost like bass and treble controls but they're really way more sophisticated than that there's a big secret about how these work uh, or real long explanations if you go online to find it out um, and a button to kick it in and out um, as you can see I have a little sticker on mine here it says out for RTA so um, when I'm doing real-time analysis you don't want your BBE engaged at that point according to the instructions of the sonic maximizer so I put a little note on there to remind me not to EQ the house with that on you should always add that in after you've actually EQ'd the room. The other part that you're going to need is some kind of playback system. Um, here I have a Tascam CD200. Uh, they do make a single space unit, which I'd like to get at some point, uh, just to save on the size of racks that I carry around. But uh, this is a two space unit and it plays everything out there, including Wave. Um, files on CDs, which is kind of rare. Not that I would get hit with those all the time, but if somebody does come up and say, oh, I burnt this on a WAV file on my recorder as backing tracks, can you play it? I can say yes. <laughs> so um, this will also handle MP3 file CDs as well as normal CDs. So that's a standard in my rack. The last piece of equipment that you may or may not need, I prefer to have uh, some type um, this one here is a front of house processor. The one I have here is a Behringer. Um, I know DBX also makes some really high quality ones. I can't afford the expensive units, but this was more in my price range and offered what I what I thought I needed. Um, why don't I just kind of zoom in here on the display in a minute. Um, this has a whole bunch of buttons. I won't go into total in-depth explanation of all this, but I'll very quickly show you what's available on it. So I'll just zoom in on the screen here and let you take a look at it as I describe which, what each display is. Okay, first off on the display we have several different meters that we can use. Uh, this is just an analog style of a digital piece of equipment. Um, it has alternate meterings that you can use uh, so you can monitor your system in different ways. This one here would be for the RTA mic. And then back to your, I find that this one's not as useful. It looks kind of cool, but I usually use the Peak RMS meter. It has four channels of metering that are vertical that you can catch things a lot faster with. Also on the unit you have a real-time analyzer. 
Um, if you watch the episode on my microphones, I do describe a microphone use for this. And what this, although it's blank right now, with a signal running through here, you would see a wave forms of, of the frequencies popping up and it would show you which frequencies are hot and which ones are not. Um, there's a different modes that you can run here. This is a bigger display of it, which is nice. Um, everything on the unit is has memory, so you can actually program different rooms and store them for later use if you're traveling around. Um, has a graphic display, graphic EQ, 31 band, stereo, available on the unit. You also have a parametric unit so you can select your frequencies and adjust your overall um, Q of the frequencies and you can use several frequencies um, within the unit. You also have a digital EQ. You have stereo imaging so you can actually control the image whether it's wide or narrow in the room. Uh, you have a built-in feedback destroyer and as you can see you have different displays here where it says off these are where it would rotate through different frequencies in the room that are giving it problems um, you can go up to 10 but I'm using five frequencies for the uh, parametric EQ that you just seen other than that you have a utility where you just kind of mess with the different modules you can program your inputs and outputs where your different sources coming in and going out are and you have a bypass where you can bypass individual units as you can see here you have the digital EQ and the stereo with are eliminated from the pack and so that's just a quick look at the Behringer Ultra Curve Pro um, this unit as you can see can replace several pieces of rack gear. A rack at least the size of this whole rack um, would be filled with just EQs, if not uh, probably a larger rack than this five space just to cover what that one rack piece of equipment does. So that's just a real quick look at a front of house unit. So there you have it. This was probably the last bunch of gear. Well there is one more thing um, you'll want some way to record your events with sometimes and today's options there are many. I have used handheld recorders from Tascam. I've used the Tascam CD burners, um, the CDA 500 uh, for playback systems. I've used the CDA 200 for playback systems. You got a lot of choices when it comes to playback and recording. You need to pick one appropriate for the size of your rig. Um, <clears throat> the recorders, you can get a Tascam unit that's a single rack space that records to Compact Flash and they record to SD cards. You can get them to record to CDs. Um, you got the palm recorders. <laughs> you know, just that there's so many different ways now to grab things up real quick and record them. I prefer, however, to have something in the rack. Uh, because they have less of an opportunity to disappear on me. Where if I just had some, you know, this rack set up and I had a little handheld sitting here, um, even this. You know these little guys? This thing has over 300 minutes of recording on it and it has a recording in. So I can run from the mixer right to this little guy which is just used for note taking. But if I lay it out there, it can disappear. So I like to have a rack mounted version of something to record on. And I'm going to upgrade from the CD recorder that I've been using a Tascam 900. And I'm going to um, get a uh, either an SD card recorder or flash compact flash recorder to go in the system. And this is like and this is just a small front of house type system. So but this is bare, basically the bare minimum so I can have music playback or playback CD tracks for singers. Um, I can have, uh, when you don't have live bands, a lot of people in the church just sing to backing tracks, so you want to have something to play. Something to handle your front of house, which are these two units make the, to make it sound really nice, and a solid power supply. 
and that's it. Most of the processing can be done on my mixer. Um, unless I get really carried away with the music side of things, then I'm going to have a bigger rack than this, and this stuff would probably all go into the bigger, like an eight space rack. Um, and then I could also fill this rack with other outside processing. So keep your options open. And um, but this is just a real quick overview of what else you will need if you want to do good. If you don't want to spend, you know, half a grand on one of these numbers here for the processing of the front of house, then you're going to want to have at least a compressor and a 31 band on the front of house off of your mixer. So that, that's just to protect your power amp and your speakers and make the front of house sound good. So if you don't have one of these, at least have those two items in the mix. And if you want to give a, a boost over those two, then include a BB Sonic Maximizer and you'll sound great. So, but that's three rack spaces where here I do it in two. So anyway, I hope you found the video helpful. Please subscribe as now I'm going to start showing how to start hooking these types of things together into putting together a live sound system. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.